generative AI is a very big thing for programmers now because generative AI can code pretty well. For example, I've been able to automate some of my work using Python. And even if I don't know how to program Python myself, I just tell Claude, which is the AI that I use, to, to code a script for me to process some files, combine PDFs or something like that. And it just does it for me and I can run it. And it works most of the time right away. And if it doesn't work, I can just tell what the error message is and then Claude will, Claude will fix it for me. The other day I started thinking about using generative AI in data analysis. And I know that you can integrate generative AI with RStudio. There is this really nice package called uh, GPT Studio. So this is how the GPT Studio works. We load the library and then we can just go to add-ins and now there is our GPT Studio and it can do four things for us. We can check, do spelling check, and then we can comment our own code. This is very useful. Uh, then we can chat and we can chat within the code. So let's open the chat. And it opens a connection to Claude because Claude is the AI that I use for R. We can, for example, ask it to provide us an example of how you would, we do graphics in R. So give me an example of how to do, do graphics using ggplot2. This is uh, the code and we can just uh, copy all this stuff and then run it. So you can code, uh, write your intent what you want to do in a comment and then we highlight and then we do our, our chat in source and then it does it for us. So uh, this is uh, very useful because now, now you can just think what you would do and, and write it in a comment and then ask Claude to write R code for you. So this is GPT Studio. When I saw this first time demonstrated in a video about a year ago, I was thinking that is it possible to do something similar with Stata? And I met Stata developers at the academic management meeting uh, in in the August 2024, and I asked if they have anything about generative AI coming to Stata. And I got the really unsatisfactory answer. They told that I can use uh, uh, ChatGPT API with their Python library, for example, but that's not really the same thing as integrating uh, a GPT into your uh, editor. But we can fortunately use different editors for Stata. So even if Stata's uh, do file editor is uh, pretty feature poor compared to many other programming editors, we can use uh, a different editor. So I've in the past I've used uh, BB Edit and Notepad++ with Stata because I we did not like the fact, I thought that those are better editors than the Stata Dufal editor. But then the Stata Dufal editor caught up with features, and I've been using that for the last five years or so. But now it's also it's, it's a time to take a look beyond Stata, because Stata's Dufal editor here, if we open it, there is there's no way for us to integrate generative AI here, because this is not extensible. But what we can do instead is that we can use uh, an external editor. And so this is Visual Studio Code, and it's a programmer's editor made by Microsoft. It is, uh, might sound a bit in intimidating, the word programmer's editor, but it's basically just the same thing as a Dufal editor, except that it's more general and it has lots more features. What I have here is, is Klein, and this is like an, uh, an agent, so it, it can do stuff. And I can ask it to do things for me, and then it'll use generative AI to do those things for me. So we can, for example, ask, uh, write me a stata do file to that demonstrates checking regression assumptions. And then it contacts Claude and it starts uh, doing coding. And when you compare this to the R Studio version, this is a, a lot better in, in terms of uh, the user experience, because you can see right away what it's, what it's doing. And then uh, 
it asks us if we want to save this file. So I'm going to save it and then we can run it. So we can just do our, there's a keyboard shortcut. And, and it did it for us. Let's take a look at another example. So generate an example of a multi-level model in Stata. Okay, looks good. And let's make sure it runs. And it doesn't, so we can just say that this is our error. And then it probably knows that it needs to sort it or use the by sort command instead of uh, by. And yeah, so it's adding sort. Yeah, so it knew, knew how to fix that by adding sort. And uh, we're going to save it. We're going to run it. Okay, the same problem as before. So we can just put it here and then it fixes it for us. Let's save and let's see how it works. And now it produced as a result. So we could be taking a look at this in a lot more detail, like why it didn't work, but that's not the point. Now we can ask it to, to do more fancy things. And let's do our, uh, let's take that out. Then we can ask it to test the random effects assumption. Test the random effects assumption following the recommendation by Antonakis, Bastardos, and Branka 2021. So this is a paper that we published in Organization Research Methods about testing the random effects assumption. And let's see how it, how it does it. And it uses the same terms that uh, John Antonakis would use. So he, he likes to talk, say that this is a Hausmann test, even if it's not exactly a Hausmann test that is being done. And uh, so, but this is actually does a Hausmann test here. And then uh, we can see if it works. And then let's, let's try it. Yeah, so, so you cannot do a Hausmann test in this case. So the reason is that it's using this uh, AREG absorbing here. And we could, we could just troubleshoot this with Claude, just tell the error and then it'll try something different. But let's, let's just assume that this is now what we wanted to have. And then we can say that you forgot the citation. It's roughly correct what it's trying to do, but it just didn't realize that this REG doesn't provide the, the, in, the output or the saved results that the Hausmann test would need. So we can say that you forgot the citation and then it probably uh, recognizes that it needs to uh, add the citation to the comments and then we can approve it. Let's see if it gets it correctly. Yeah, so this is on ignoring random effects assumption. That's the name of our paper. We can also do other things. So let's try another example. So this is uh, the citation looks correct. So I would have to verify it. And let's just uh, start a new task. So we're going to close that. We're going to close that and don't save. Then uh, we can say do a uh, Monte Carlo simulation that uh, demonstrates the small sample bias of two stasis squares in Stata. Okay. 
and it tells what it wants to do. So this looks reasonable. And uh, let's see how it whether it works. This is something that that I and, and John Antonakis are from whom I copied the concept uses as a course assignment. And this is something that the student will spend a couple of days working on. And here we have it. Uh, and let, let's see if it works. So this is like a few seconds, something that the student might spend a few days working on. And let's see if it works. So is Tuesday's least course biased? We can immediately see that uh, it should probably do it in a bit different way. So uh, instead of uh, doing this over replications, it should uh, use the simulate command. And uh, the estimated coefficient is one, and it's one here. So we can see two states least cross less are uh, efficient. So it doesn't really demonstrate it. Uh, the reason here is probably that the number of observations is, is 100, and the effect is fairly large. So in this case, the bias doesn't really, uh, really show. Uh, we would have to work a bit on this. So we could say, for example, use the simulate command instead of a loop. Use uh, simulate over different sample sizes. Use weaker instruments and smaller effect. So that would probably make the bias more visible. But you can see that this is a, a really useful thing for, for if you want to do like a project, or if you're a teacher and you want to demonstrate something, then you can just ask the uh, specify what is it that you want to demonstrate and then ask uh, this, this client tool to write the code for you. It automates a, a large part of the work that I do when I do my presentation slides about a statistical or research methods topic. And let's see this code. I'm going to save it. And uh, so it, it makes this uh, looks good, the program. And then it runs over sample size. It uses simulate. It generates bias and then it summarizes the bias. And then it stores uh, these results, prints them, and then it creates a combined plot. This almost certainly doesn't work, but it's like 95% done, but there's always like a little error that you need to then have expertise to correct. And now, now the question is that if, uh, if students on my course ask me if should they use this, I think this is like something that any professional researcher who works uh, and, and writes code in Stata should be using. But if you just want to learn the software and how it works, then uh, this will be useful. But if you solely rely on this instead of learn how to do all these things by hand, then if you just ask the AI to generate this uh, code for you, then uh, would you understand what this does? If you just see it AI generated instead of writing it in your, on your own. So this is kind of like a double-edged sword. I would say that this is very useful for a student. Uh, you can generate examples for this. And it might be useful for, for doing some assignments. But I still think that writing this things, thing by hand and then understanding where you go wrong, what is the error message when you make a mistake, and how do you fix that mistake yourself. I think that's still a, a very useful thing to do. For example, this is variable D, uh, D50, uh, D all is 50 not found. The problem in this code is that when you have this, this loop here, the new clear, which means that you no longer have these variables. So after clearing, then uh, this two way command here no longer has access to this D all is 50. So uh, can you actually? learn how to see these kind of things just by following what generated AI does. Maybe not, for at least for most people. But nevertheless, if you are stuck with uh, uh, doing an assignment, then this is something that could be kind of like a, a fellow student who is very good at mechanics, but doesn't quite fully understand on a deep level what they're doing. So it might be useful 
to get like ideas. Okay, so this is the command that I might, might use and I might use something that looks like this and then trying to figure it out yourself based on that. All right, I'll show you soon how to set this up on your computer. So this is running on my, work, on my Mac. This is a fresh install of Visual Studio Code. Let's take a look at how we set up everything that I just demonstrated from this point. So it first asks us to pick our theme. I like the light. And then uh, we need to start installing extensions. So extensions are installed here. And uh, the first thing that we need is to have an extension for generative AI. And we can search for that by searching, for example, Cloud, which is the AI that I use. And it gives us clients. So this is the coding agent that I just demonstrated. So we'll install it. I'm using this. I'm doing this on a Mac, but the process for doing this on Windows is exactly the same. So we're going to install it here. And then we go to the client here. And it asks us with what is our provider. So our provider is, is Anthropic. And then we need to create an API key. You can create an API key for free. So Claude allows you to some use it for free for a little while, and then uh, you have to pay for it. So I'm paying for it, and I paid maybe 20 euros for two months, and I've been using it quite a lot. So we're going to create a key. And now, before you think about pausing the video and copying my key, I'm using, I'm deleting this demo key right after I record this video. So you will not be able to use this key. So we're going to add it to the default workspace and copy the key from here. And then we put it here and then uh, let's go. And we can ask, uh, does it work? So for example, uh, let's say, let's ask, who are you? And we can see that the API works and uh, it costs us two cents to do this query. The reason is, that it uh, probably sent quite a lot of uh, instructions on what kind of response to provide if we do coding. And then, so we're now set up with uh, generative AI. And this is useful because if some setup of some other software fails, we can give the error message to Klein and then Klein can help us through the process. Let's set up Stata next. We pick extensions. So let's search for Stata. And what we need to have is a uh, syntax highlighting. So Stata Enhanced will do that for you. And now we have installed this and we should have syntax highlighting. So this is the same thing that you have in your uh, do file editor. So it's much easier to see that this is a command. This is a function and that's the name of a variable. Then we need to have a, a language server next and language server allows us, uh, gives us autocomplete, it gives us uh, brackets and all kinds of other things. Then we need to have run Stata, which is for running Stata, and we can install it. And now we have the extensions that we need. So we have client, Stata enhanced, Stata language server, and Stata run. What are essential are the Stata run and client, but Stata Enhanced and Language Server make working with uh, state, with the code a bit easier because or make convenient more pleasant because of syntax highlighting and autocompletion. So let's try if it works. And what we will do now is that we will launch Stata. So we have it here. And um, then uh, let's do let's go to Klein and Let's say ask it to uh, give us a regret example of recursion analysis data. Give us a, a, an example of regression with data. And it works then we can run it just to show that it works. So this is pretty easy. You just set up the, uh, the, the three extensions and then Klein. So we're going to save it. After we installed the Stata run, we need to do a, a bit of configuration. So if you just use Stata run and then you try to run a do file, 
it doesn't do anything because you need to tell it where your stata is located. And here is another, here's some explanation of what you need to install if you're running on Windows. I don't have access to Windows computers, so I don't, I can't demonstrate this. But generally, you will need to go here and then go to settings. And then um, we need to tell which uh, Stata we are using. And I'm using Stata MP. So uh, most people are probably using Stata SE, but I have the MP. After you've installed the Stata run, you can just run things from here with a keyboard shortcut. And the thing that you need to remember is that it may not always work. And for me, I had to think about it for a while because this is the second time I installed it. But there are a couple of things to check if this doesn't work. First, uh, you need to restart uh, the this was to your code on Mac for it to be able to connect to Stata. And another thing that you need to check is uh, the settings. And here is the description of what you need to do. And for Windows, Windows, you need to do this here. And then you need to make sure that it knows uh, which version of Stata you're using. So I'm using Stata MP. So make sure that the settings are correct that you have done all this stuff here if you're using using Windows, then restart and then it should work. And now we have everything set up. So we can just open client here and ask it to uh, create an example of regression using Stata. Yeah, it knew that it's Stata even if I misspell it as, as Stata. And it does it for us, we save it, and then we can we can run it. So here. So this is how you are uh, set up generative AI based coding assistant using Visual Studio Code and Stata.